Hello you, it's me. Today we're going to talk about Leviathan Wakes by James A. Corey, which is the pen name of collaborative authors Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank. This is an eight book series so far with the final and the ninth book coming out later this year. I'm going to see if I can read all of them before that comes out so I can review it on release day, but we will see how that goes. I'm not an organised person. I'll go through the plot review. There will be some spoiler bits at the end, but I'll mark it all on the time bar underneath. This book is set 300 years in the future from now, after the discovery of the Epstein Drive has opened up space travel. We're still limited, however, and humanity hasn't pushed much further than Jupiter with some small science bases operating in the rings of Saturn. The system has split into three main populations, Earth slash the Moon, the domed cities and the military fleets of Mars, and the asteroid and ship-dwelling Belters who inhabit the rocky belt of space between Mars and Jupiter. There's a lot of tension already in the system between the inner planets themselves and between them and the belt, with Earth trying to exert control over the whole system. An ice-hauling ship called the Canterbury picks up a distress signal. They arrive to check it out, they dispatch a shuttle, they find it infested with a strange unknown disease, and the Canterbury is immediately fired upon, blown up by a mysterious new technology using stealth warship. Holden, the highest ranking surviving officer of the Canterbury, sends out this system-wide broadcast implicating the Martian Navy. You deny everything, point the finger at the belters and rack up this tension even further. Meanwhile, on the asteroid station Ceres, police officer Miller is hired to find out what happened to a young woman called Julie Mao, the daughter of a rich industrial family. But as he does, he finds out that she may be involved in this whole solar system conflict, and all the organised criminals start leaving his station for parts unknown. Who is pulling the strings? What do they have to gain from an all-out solar war? When you're in possession of a secret that could change humanity's future, who the hell do you go to for help? Okay, going into this book, this is not what I expected at all. It's such a mix of genres, and I feel that that means it can appeal to a lot of different people who read a lot of different things. It opens up with this body horror space gore that feels almost event horizony, cutting immediately away from that, leaving you wondering what the hell was going on, how is that going to tie relevantly back into the story later. The chapters where we follow Holden feel very classic space opera with this almost oceanic navy story feel, ship battley vibe, and then Miller, who is almost like this Deckard type character, through whom we really get this sort of Sam Spade detective noir narrative. All the while in the background you have these warring factions, political intrigue. So this book is a mishmash of a lot of really good stuff. I will say that this is not a concept driven book at all, which could be a deal breaker for fans of retro sci-fi uh, in which the story revolves around an idea or a concept, with everything else sort of as frosting on that cake. The actual science beyond the Epstein drive, an explanation for which we don't really get, is very minimal. But this lack of jargon and the book's focus on the people is very people-focused with well-developed, diverse characters, might actually make this book more accessible to people who aren't huge sci-fi nerds. People who like books about networks of parties, the relationships between them, with multiple POVs, almost in a George R. R. Martin style. It manages to do this, though, without info dumping about the inner workings of governments and political bodies, which is a relief. But saying that, the science is very sound, is very down to earth and believable, and doesn't feel much further in the future than around the corner. This book uses 99% science that already exists, that we already have, which makes it feel like hard sci-fi. I think this would really appeal to fans of Ian MacDonald's Lunar series or Kim Stanley Robinson's Red Mars books. This is not a cool jungle cruise alien safari drive round and look at pretty things book. What is the impressive scenery in this book is human ingenuity and determination and grit and the sheer will to exist where nature absolutely does not want us to be. I've read a lot of reviews saying that the small scope of this book kind of annoyed people and it didn't have those exotic sci-fi elements, far off lands, alien cultures. But honestly, I loved it. It's quite a realistic book, and I don't think it's pessimism, I do think it is realism, in that humans are in an advanced era, we've moved on from where we are today, we've spread out further, 
and we've taken all of our horrid problems with us. The bad stuff has been exacerbated, which is realistic, because in the solar system, the Earth would want to keep control of everything, and the further you stretch a central government, the harder it is to enforce and police the population. Crime would be worse, organised crime would be more prevalent. One of the things that is sad, and is a thing people do and is always very depressing, is this idea that to get a bunch of people to work together and forget their differences and create an us, there has to be a them. Humans pull together, forget their differences, but only when there's another group that's even more different. Every single group in this book looks at the other groups and lumps together everybody in it. Belters think all Martians are the same. Earth thinks all Belters are the same. And the book showcases that this is wrong, that this is not the right way to think. That in each group there are regular people, there are traitors, there are extremists, there are self-servers, there are people who don't care. There's no black or white here. Every human is a unique case with their own stakes, their own motivations. I think there are two things that help this be such an interesting part of the book. The first is the existence of Belta Patois, and the culture and language being such a mishmash, showing that previous discriminations have all been sort of pushed to the wayside to make room for new ones, i.e. what planet you're from. The new language I thought was well constructed, something else you also see in New Moon. The second thing was that you have Miller, who is a Belter, and Holden, who is Earthborn, and their two point of views. And when in the story they finally meet, you have these scenes where they're both in the same place, they're both examining the same thing, they're both examining each other. So you see each character through their own eyes, and then immediately through the eyes of somebody who has had a very different upbringing, who is making assumptions, who doesn't understand motivation, the past, or what's going on in that other person's head. I really like the political questions that this raised too, with the belt such as how can you demand to be an independent body while failing to produce resources that you need to survive, relying on import, relying on trade, and the people campaigning for this independence are people who don't understand the reliance on that, these essential political connections. And on the other side of the coin, you have what the hell kind of right does any government have to exert power and control over somebody who wants to go and live far, far away and not be governed by you? Is war the only way to separate one governing body from another governing body? A couple of spoilery bits I liked. This story is very much a found alien tech story. Couldn't say that earlier, gives away a bit of the plot. You have this alien thing being thrown into our solar system. And because it's a threat to us, because its biology works differently, humans look at it and go, weapon, before they understand what it is they're holding on to. It's very realistic human emotion circling this aspect of the story. Some groups wanting to weaponize, some people wanting to sell it, to exploit it, to take it apart and understand it from the inside. Found alien tech has always been one of my favorite ever subgenres of sci fi. I also think that when describing the alien tech and how it developed and evolved and manifested a form, they did such a good job of making it incomprehensible without avoiding a physical description. <laughs> The ending sequence really reminded me of parts of Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Not the film, that's very different, but the underground tower in the book, if you've read it, I feel like you'd know what I meant. I love that nobody is safe in this series. The book opens with Julie Mao with the point of view chapter, cuts away instantly. You're waiting for 200 pages of her to come back into the story and then BAM they find her corpse in the shower. It's super gritty and I love that even though you have point of view it does not guarantee survival. One thing I wasn't too keen on. I get what they tried to do with Miller. I really do. I get that he's down and out, his life's work is finished, he's let go from the police force. I get how he would be caught up in this case, how he would want to see it through to the end, to get closure, to feel like he'd done something and made a difference. But the weird sexualizing of the young woman in his mind, that he doesn't know, and what really devolved into an unhealthy obsession, I feel like not enough was given as to why that happened. I felt like it was something that should have come much later, after much more in the way of failure and desperation along the road. I think it moved too fast, and I wish that Miller, who is such a cool character to read, was motivated by something more than loneliness and sex. I'm not saying it's unrealistic. Um, I'm just saying I wish it had been slower burning. I am glad I read the book first. I'm going to be watching the series, definitely, um, but. 
I I'm glad I have my own images of what the characters, the locations looked like. I really had a lot of fun with this one. I'm going to give it four stars. Can't wait to crank out the rest of the series. Can't wait to watch the TV series. If you've watched the TV series, let me know what you thought of it. Is it good? Does it do the book justice? So thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to follow me on Goodreads, which I'll link, which I'll link down below, and Twitter, which I'll also link down below. I'm on Readly as well. My app is Max. This was one of our monthly picks for Interstellar Book Club, which is our sci-fi book club on Discord. Feel free to join that. I'll link that down below as well if you like sci-fi and it's your jam. I'll see you soon for the next review. Bye.